Right, so dynamic applications must interact with data at some point. The data could come from a number of sources, such as a flat JSON file or a web API, but the most common source is from a database engine. So in this video, I'll be showing you the basics of working with SQLite, which is a lightweight relational database. It's great for your development environment because it requires no setup or configuration. Just plug it in and go. Now before we look at the popular SQL abstraction tool called SQL Alchemy, we're going to work with straight SQL. On that note, it's important for developers to learn SQL. Why? Well, for the same reason why you are probably learning Flask, so you know it's actually happening. Sure, you could skip Flask altogether and jump right to Django, but you'd have a hard time understanding what's happening beneath the hood. The same goes for SQL. If you jump right to SQL Alchemy, working with Python objects rather than vanilla SQL, then you'll miss out on how the SQL queries are, are actually structured. I can almost 100% guarantee you that at some point you'll have to write a SQL query. As the queries get more advanced, the easier it becomes to write them in actual SQL. Plus, it's hard to structure queries in an efficient manner using Python objects without fully understanding SQL. So I'll stop my rant for now, but if you'd like to know more, check out my popular blog post called Learn SQL, Damn It, and I will post the link below. So moving on, keep in mind that Flask can handle both SQL and NoSQL databases. So everything from Postgres to MySQL to MongoDB to RethinkDB. Now when we launch our app in production, we'll utilize a Postgres database, but I do plan on showing you how to work with straight JSON objects from MongoDB as well. And if you're curious, there's a simple Flask to-do app tutorial on the RealPython blog that details how to connect to a NoSQL database. Check it out. I'm going to assume you have zero SQL knowledge and show you how to create and add data to a basic database. However, this is not a video on learning SQL. If you do want to learn SQL, which again, I highly encourage you to do so, you will learn it from the ground up in the RealPython course. So check that out. And you want to be sure to download SQLite before beginning. And you can get that from the SQLite.org website. I also recommend the SQLite database browser so you, that you can interact with your database without using SQL. I use this as a quick sanity check to make sure my queries work. And you can download it here from SQLiteBrowser.org. So let's start by creating our database's tables and then add some data. So let's go ahead and open up the terminal here. So let's start by activating our virtual environment. And then we need to open up the uh, project in our text editor. So let's go ahead and create a new file called sql.py. Then within that file, let's first uh, import SQLite 3. And this just enables Python to interact with the database. Now we want to create a connection to a database. So we can say with SQLite3.connect. And then within the parentheses here, we want to put the name of the database. So let's just call it uh, sample.db as connection. So this will create the database if it does not exist. And now we need to define a cursor which allows us to interact with the database itself. We'll assign it to this variable C. Next, we want to go ahead and create a new table. So we're going to start working with SQL now. So let's go ahead and create the table. Let's call it posts. And then let's add in two columns to that, one called title, and the other called description. And both of those have a text data type. And finally, let's go ahead and add some data here. So we'll have another SQL query, or SQL statement, I'm sorry. So this is syntax insert into and then the name of the database, which is posts, and then we put in some values. 
And these are going to be the values for the title and the description. So title, just say good, and then Actually, I need a single one there. That's why I was getting the, the syntax highlighting was off. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and say, call this one well, and then I'm well. Okay, very, very basic. Cool, so go ahead and save the file. And then if we go ahead and run it from our terminal, so Python SQL.py, uh, let's see here. It will post as three columns, but two values were supplied. Oh, I have another comma there. Huh. Okay, let me show you how to troubleshoot this real quick. So actually I am gonna drop the table Okay, there we go. So if we didn't get an error there, then we can assume that it worked. But let's just go ahead and double check that since we did have some problems. So we can get, we can access our database using SQLite. So we can just use the command SQLite3 and then enter the name of the database. So since that command worked, then the database was in fact created. So now let's run a SQL query. Uh, select all, asterisk means all, and then you enter the name of the table here. We can see our data here. So we have good, I'm good, well, and then I'm well. So we created it just fine. And then of course we can also add in new posts from here. So insert into posts. Um, let's do the values. Uh, hello for the title, and then for the description. Um, hello from the shell. And we need a semicolon. So then if we run the all post commands, we can see our new post right there. Hello, hello from the shell. So you can pause the video now if you'd like and add in some more data. I also suggest checking out the SQLite documentation from SQLite.org to see examples of some other commands. Try deleting a post, for example, or maybe update a post description. Take all the time you need, I'll, I'll wait. Okay, so I hope you had some fun and learned a few things. So let's go ahead and exit the shell. We can actually take a look at our data real quick in the SQLite browser. So let's open up this folder in our finder. See, so here's the database. Go ahead and double click that to open up the SQLite browser. And then if we click browse data, we can see our data here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. And actually, since these are not on multi-lines, we do not need, we only need one of these. Okay, so next let's open up the app.py file. And we need to add in some basic configuration indicating the existence of the database to Flask. So first we need to import SQLite 3. And then we need to add in another configuration variable here. So. Um, let me just put it down here. So app dot database and that is equal to the name of our database, which is sample dot db. Save that. And now let's add in a function that will connect to our database, or rather create a database object that we can interact with. Let's call the function um, connectDB and then let's go ahead and return that object. So return 
SQLite 3, and then we'll put in that variable, database. So let's just test this out real quick. So go ahead and open up a shell, and I'm going to be using I, the IPython shell. If you don't have it installed, I suggest you install IPython. Otherwise, just enter the regular shell. So let's go ahead and import everything from our app. Oops. So from app import all. So let's call that function and assign it to a variable. Let's connect DB. So you can see that there's that connection object there. And again, we signed it to the variable C. So now if we want to close it, we can just do C.close. Cool. So let's go ahead and exit the shell and return to our code here. So let's go ahead and use that function to establish a connection so that we can query the database. And we're going to do this from our home function here. So basically after somebody logs in, they're going to be able to view all the posts. So we're going to start by establishing the connection and we're going to use this object called G. And G is an object that's specific to Flask that's used to store a temporary object during a request. So we could store the database connection like in the example here or like the currently logged in user, for example. And this value is reset after each request. So that's going to create our connection object. And we need to import G. So next we need to query the database. So select all from posts. And after we're done fetching the data from the post table, we want to cast it to a dictionary. We're going to use a variable named posts. Here's our dictionary that we're going to be adding all the data to. So the title is going to be row zero, and so that's four row in fetch all. If you're curious about this code here, I would test it out in the shell so you can understand what's going on here. And then we'll go ahead and close the database. And finally, we want to pass that post variable to our template. So we can say posts equal posts. So this is the variable that's actually getting passed to our template, and we're assigning it to this variable. And this is just a common convention. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and update the template. So open up index.html. I'm going to go ahead and grab the code from the repo. So templates, index.html. This is the new portion here. And copy and paste this in here. So this is relatively straightforward. So we're using a just a simple for loop. And then we're calling each key on each pass, and then that displays the results. Okay, make sure that's saved. So let's go ahead and test this out. So back in the terminal, let's go ahead and fire up our server. And then navigate to localhost 5000. Let's go ahead and log in. And you can see our posts here. So we open up developer tools and then go to the network tab. Go ahead and refresh the page here. 
And let's go ahead and scroll down here. So we can actually see the response headers here. So we can see the content type and then the content length. And then if we click on the actual response, we can see the HTML that is going to be rendered. So we can see the actual title and post and then the actual values that come from the dictionary. All right, so that's it. We're all done. And you know what? We actually have a full application here. Can you believe it? Well, to be clear, we have a Web 1.0 application allowing a user to log in and then view some information. We still need to add in some sort of user interaction, possibly by allowing them to add new posts. And that's for another video. So next time we'll add in some unit tests. Until then, think about where you'd like this video series to go. What kind of app would you like me to create, in other words? The stack will be eventually be Postgres, Flask, of course, and then Angular. And there will be a RESTful API that Angular consumes data from, and I'll probably have that create some nice formatted charts and graphs, maybe using a library like D3. But as far as the data is concerned, what would you like to see? I like the idea of developing an app to create quizzes that provide instant feedback with Angular. If you'd like to see something different, let me know. Comment, email, etc. So thanks for watching. Cheers.